Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing the most anticipated DC Comics solicits for July. So these are the books I'm most looking forward to, or books I just wanted to discuss. So first up, we're going to talk about Superman, Son of Kal-El. So, you know, it's been a while since we've had Action Comics and Superman kind of be two different titles, two different, um narrative. So now we're actually getting to see John Kent written by Tom Taylor because it's a, actually two writers. You have uh, Philip who's who's still writing action comics but now Tom Taylor writing this one and he's going to be writing a John Kent story. Uh, I'm a huge Tom Taylor fan so already I want to try this out. But on the flip side, I'm not a huge John Kent fan. There hasn't been a writer that has gotten me into the character, but I think if there's any writer to do so, it is Tom Taylor. So I'm very excited to see what he's going to do with this book, and I'll definitely try out the first issue of this. I can't say I'm ecstatic, because again, I'm not a huge John Kent fan, but I'm glad that the, the books are going in, in a different direction, and you're getting two different tales with the, the two different Superman titles and two different voices. I think that's a, a great idea. Now, moving on to a book I am super excited about, which is Static Season 1. Now, this has been slightly delayed because it was supposed to come out a couple of months ago because they were originally going to do digital first and then printed, but thankfully, the fans had spoken and it is going to be digital and print on the same day. So, I'm excited for that and I, I think that really gives the opportunity for all readers to to get the revelations of the, st of the story all at once. I'm not a huge fan of digital first stories and I usually do read it printed and then sometimes you get things spoiled and then you have different reading experiences between uh, digital readers and physical readers so it's nice that we're, we're getting this physically and I'm curious to see if this is going to be a whole new adventure will it dive into older milestone stories for Static or will it dive into more of the cartoon so I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with this book and what tone it's going to be because I think it could go in many different directions but I'm super excited for this one. Next up is also a new milestone book and that is uh, Iron and Rocket Season 1. Honestly I don't know much about these characters. I've never read them before but as a Young Justice fan I've seen the characters on there and I'm curious to learn more about them and uh, hopefully fall in love with these characters. So definitely picking up the first issue of, of that one. Moving on to Suicide Squad gets get Joker issue one and this is written by Brian Azzarello and it is a DC black label so out of continuity out of continuity story and uh, we've, we're getting a lot of Suicide Squad uh, we had that fan uh, round robin where there might be a Harley Quinn Suicide Squad book we obviously have the regular Suicide Squad book we have the Suicide Squad movie coming out and now we have this black label which uh, you know sounds cool but you know I feel like uh, I'm a little Suicide Squad Squad out and even Jokered out. We have a lot of Joker stories as well. I might give this first issue a try. It really depends on what the week looks like for that one. Moving on to Batman Secret Files Huntress issue one. We have two one shots. We also have Signal. I'm more excited for Huntress uh, because we are getting the backup stories for Detective Comics and that's going to spin out right from there and I've been loving uh, Mariko Tamaki and Dan Mora's Detective Comics. So I'm curious to see what this one shot's going to bring and if in August we're going to get more Secret Files on different characters and uh, you know Batman has a big spotlight as, as we know and you know as a Batman fan I'm really excited about it and I like when it's characters that are not just Bruce Wayne so we are getting different voices from the Bat family like Huntress like Signal. Moving on to the title of this video and that is Justice League Infinity I think it's called yeah Infinity and this is uh, kind of in the vein of Batman the anime series it is a continuation of the iconic Justice League cartoon written by the writers of the cartoon. Now I was actually a little disappointed with the Batman the Animated Series comic. I thought it kind of ran flat, was a bit too di two dimensional. Now there are different writers on this book so I'm curious to see if it'll bring that three dimensional storytelling we love from the Justice League cartoon or is it really just going to be the art style that's similar. I I'm curious to see what's going to be brought here but again I was a bit disappointed with Batman the anime series so I hope I'm not disappointed like that one and it again dives into some more three di dimensional storytelling that made us fall in love with Justice League in the first place. Moving on to Shazam issue one. This is returning and 
this is tying into Teen Titans Academy. I did not love issue one of Teen Titans Academy. We'll have to see how long I stay on with the series. I do want to at least see it through for uh, the Suicide Squad uh, crossover that's coming up. But Shazam, for this one, he's connected to, obviously, with the stuff that happened with him in Future State, and also he's connected to Teen Titans Academy right now, but the family members do not have their powers anymore, and that was a little disappointing. One of my favorite parts of Shazam is, honestly, the, the family aspect. It's what I liked about the movie, it's what I like about the old comics, and what I liked about uh, the last run of Shazam as well. So I'm curious to see what direction they're going to take it here, but I'm sure people who are fans of Shazam are happy he's getting his own book again. I just don't know about the direction for this one. Moving on to the last issue of American Vampire. I am a huge fan of American Vampire, and I'm just curious to see how this is going to end. Is everyone going to survive? What twisted turns are going to be here, and what poetic uh, ending are we going to get with this one? So yeah, I'm, I'm just excited. Moving on to Batman Urban Legends issue 5, of course I'm talking about this one, because guess who has a story here? Stephanie Brown and Cassandra Kane. Also, I've been loving the Jason Todd story. That's been a real dark horse for me. I like Jason Todd's character, but he's not like my favorite Bat family member, but I've been loving Chip Zdarsky's Jason Todd story. I think it's, if anything, uh, the main reason to pick up this book. But also you get different uh, narratives from different Bat family members like uh, Tim Drake, we have a story from. And then like I said, Stephanie and Cassandra, who I am huge fans of. And, uh, you know, I, we haven't seen in a while, even though there's so many teasers that they're going to be important for the Bat family and maybe potentially have a Batgirls book. But we still haven't really seen much besides like the little shout outs. So I am really excited for this kind of girl night out story uh with the two two characters here so yeah very excited and also great art uh, i think sweeney boo is doing the, the artwork for that and I've, I've really enjoyed her art uh from what i've seen uh from from our other titles moving on to crush and lobo issue two I, I really enjoyed the last Teen Titans run, and, and maybe that's why I'm a little disappointed with D Teen Titans Academy, like I discussed. Uh, and I love Crush. I love her as a character, and I'm excited to see how she's going to team up with her father and just learn more about her as an individual. With Crush, it really was a lot about the relationships with other people, uh, how she had a crush on... Um, one of her teammates and her friendship with Roundhouse. It really had to do with other people's dynamics. And yes, this is going to be a Crush and Lobo book, but I have a feeling we're going to learn a lot about Crush as an individual. And like I said, I'm, I'm super excited for that. Moving on to Infinite Frontier issue two. This looks like it's going to be a big book for DC. It's the same writer who wrote uh, the one shot, I guess issue zero of, of Infinite Frontier, Joshua Williamson. And it seems like they're really exploring different sides of the DC universe. We have Alan Scott on one side, Roy Harper, uh, Chase on the on other side. So I'm curious to see what this book's going to bring in on the flip side, what revelations it's going to bring and how important it will be for the future of the DC universe. Moving on to Nightwing issue 82, the best DC comic on stands right now. And I know there's only been two issues, but damn, I love Nightwing. And it looks like things are really going to come to a head with learning about uh, uh, Nightwing's parents' uh, killer's daughter, uh, Zuko's daughter. And, uh, you know, how she's connected to all this and, and what role she'll play. And, yeah, I, I'm just interested to see where that's going to go and, and just so excited to, to read more of this series. Moving on to The Flash issue 772. I recently jumped on to this book as Wally West is the lead and we get to see officially, finally, more of the family dynamic between Linda and his kids. And I hope this is the the permanent stance of the book we had this whole what we're going through this whole adventure to get to the place of wally becoming the flash again uh and i'm curious to see what the tone will be for the rest of the series post arc one and if this solicit is solidifying what the book's gonna be about Moving on to the last solicit I'm going to talk about, and that's the Joker issue five. And I've been loving the Joker. I think it's already 
maybe even inching out Batman as like my favorite uh, book uh, next to Nightwing as well. And uh, it's really interesting to see Jim Gordon's stance and point of view. But what was interesting about this solicit is that it looks like it's going to be a little bit more about the Joker. Now, this book is called The Joker, and it really does feel more like a Jim Gordon book, which I actually think makes this book work. But also you want to see some Joker. So I'm really excited to see some of his story as well. But let me know in the comments below what are some books you're excited for for the month? What books are you enjoying from DC Comics? Hopefully you guys enjoy. Definitely go like this video, subscribe, comment. It really helps uh, the channel and go check out my Twitter and Facebook. Go check out my comics like Father Like Daughter and They Call Her a Dancer. And every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time is Comic Book Weekly where we discuss our favorite comics and comic book news. Thanks guys. Bye.